All right. Uh, sounds better. So. so my name is Matthias Biel. I'm working as an API consultant, um, mostly in Switzerland. And um, I write about my experiences um, from the API space on the website apiuniversity.com. Uh, you can go check it out. Um, why am I here today? Because I'm approached by my clients quite often. They say, well, I have this great API. How can I make money with this API? And um, well, it's really hard to answer this question, but what I try to do is give you a couple of tricks or um, experience that I had from the work with my clients to make it more likely that you can monetize your API. To start out, um, who here in the room loved to play Lego when they were a kid? Wow, it's all hands, almost all hands going up. Great. Um, and why do I bring this Lego picture here in the beginning? Because for me, the Lego brick here is like a symbol for an API. It's super easy. It has a super simple interface here. And because it has this easy interface, it's very intuitive and very simple to build things with the API, to build things quickly, right? And there are, in the API space, the API consumers who profit from that. They buy the Lego bricks, they buy the APIs. And what they can do is they can build really cool things really quickly because of these APIs. For example, okay, let's take um, an app that you might have seen before. Let's take here the Uber app. And um, you have on this Uber app several functionalities. You have, a, you have a map, so you have a positioning service, you have the map service, you have um, a way to interact with the driver, you have some kind of voice over IP, um, you can do payment for the drives that you take, and um, you get some receipts emailed to you. All of this functionality is actually provided by an API. So building something like that is pretty simple because it's Lego bricks. Putting these Lego bricks together, um, well, I, of course, I simplify and putting a user interface on it. So this is the view of the API consumer. But there is another view, and that's the view of the API provider. It's a guy who builds the API. And if we stay in this Lego analogy, it would be, well, it would be Lego. And they have another view on the API. So Lego thinks about how do I build this interface, exact specs on how the Lego brick has to look like. And if we transfer this analogy back into APIs, it would be our API descriptions, our API documentations. We specify exactly how the API works, what the interface is like, and we also specify how to connect to existing backend systems if we have them. Okay, um, now there is of course a relationship between the API consumer and the API provider. It's like the me loving to play with Lego with my son, um, buying the Legos from Lego. And uh, the same way there is a relationship between the consumer, the API consumer and the API provider. Um, and we can look at this relationship in more detail when we look at the API value chain. And um, this API value chain, I will build it up over, over time, um, starts with the API provider. The API provider decides that he wants to have an API, and he, he does this because he already has something in his business, some really valuable assets that he thinks he can market and that provide some value for someone else. For example, there can be some um, algorithms, there can be access to some telco systems, it can be... Um, it can be just data, data about users, which is valuable. Then the API provider takes this data and packages it up in such a way that it's very easy to integrate for other people. And this is the API. And who is going to use this API? Well, the API consumer. And the API consumer is going to use this Lego brick in order to build apps with it. Really simple. Um, and of course, these apps can be websites, can be mobile apps, and so forth, but it doesn't stop there. Of course, this app has to be sold to someone, or is used at least by someone, as the end user. And so we can see there's a, a value chain, and in this value chain, how does the value flow here? It flows from right to left. It flows from the business assets um, over the API to the app and arrives at the end user. So end user has some value from these business assets over there, provided by the API, provided by the app. So the end user then 
um, because he receives all this value, will say, hey, I'm going to pay for that. That's, that's cool. And maybe he, he pays for the app first. And uh, that allows the app developer also to pay the API developer. That's a very simple uh, way of looking at the API value chain. And um, of course, there can be variations on that. But let's start with that. And um, what I would like to talk to you about are the challenges for the API provider in this API value chain. And well, some of the challenges that uh, API providers address me with is, um, how can I make money with my API? I, start, I, I said this in the beginning. And another question I get is, how can I make my API more easy to use so I can get more API consumers to, um, to use my API? And then there's another question that I wrote up. And that question, the last one, I actually never get, get it asked. But I think this is a very important question. And this is, am I building an API that developers need? I never get this question. Um, but now, using it in a constructive way, I would say, for an API provider, he has to answer that question first, before he thinks about um, monetizing the API and making money with the API. So that's why I put this question in the beginning, and I say this is the challenge number one for the API provider that he has to solve. And it's identify APIs based on the assets that you have that developers really need out there. And then the challenge number two um, is finding a business model for that API that you have identified that developers need, build a business model around it. And then the challenge number three is building APIs that people want to use, so they don't have to use it, they want to use it. So how do you make these APIs so attractive that people want to use it? So I will go through these three different challenges in this talk, and I offer you some experiences that I had on how you can address these challenges. Okay, so challenge number, four, number one, identify APIs that people, or developers in this case, really need. And the method that I use, or the tool that I use here, is design thinking. And in design thinking, you try to uncover the hidden needs um, that uh, sometimes are not on the surface of the developers. And uh, how, do you, how do you use design thinking? You start with need finding and synthesis. You try to understand um, what the developers really want. And then you do some brainstorming, um, you prototype, you test and learn, and um, then you start this cycle over again. It's an iterative process. Okay, so I'm going to show you some pictures of some work that I did around this. We had a workshop, and we, um, for need finding, we wanted to understand our users or our developers. So invited some developers that we thought could use that new API we were thinking about, and we brought together the API consumers and the API providers, and they were given a design challenge, and they had to work together um, so we could understand what the needs of the API consumers are. Now, the next step, um, when you work together, you start getting ideas. And you get, actually, a lot of ideas. And um, you write up these ideas, you're brainstorming, you try to order them. And then the next important step comes, you prototype something in this workshop. And it's not writing code, no, it's doing prototypes based on pen and paper things. So, so this guy here, he made an app uh, with a form, and as you can see, the API, or, or the app connects to an API, and uh, the, the answer that's received from the API um, can be seen when you fold the paper up. So it's just a very, very simple prototype um, that can lead to an understanding between the API consumer and the API provider. And I had another group here on this workshop, and they used another technique. Uh, this is another form of prototyping, where they used role-playing to prototype the API. Right? It's a big, it was a, an enterprise, and there are a lot of back-end systems, and this API here had to go to different back-end systems and get some data from these back-end systems, rewrite the data, and deliver it. So using role-playing, um, this information could be conveyed quite clearly. And then the last step is learning. Learning from um, what you have discovered by interacting with your future um, customers. 
Okay, so this was very quickly on design thinking and identifying the needs that developers have that you can satisfy with an API. So if, um, well, if the first iteration does not lead to anything, you just do a second iteration. So what we actually did is that we first thought that some target developers would be our customers, and then after one iteration we figured out maybe that's not the case, maybe we have to change, maybe we have to have um, another target group, and then we just went through the cycle again, did another workshop. Okay, but after challenge one, you know that you have found a need um, that developers have, and now you have a need, it's much easier to sell this because someone else needs it, right? Um, I, I say challenge two here in, in a very bold way is make money with APIs, but actually it's not only about making money. Uh, there can be several drivers for um, having APIs. The first one is revenue, of course, making money directly with the API. But other things can be you just want to widen your reach, you want to grow innovation, um, you want or you have to comply to certain rules like PSD2 or something, um, or you want to gain insight. So these are usually the drivers for APIs. And in the end, of course, you hope that it will be, um, it will result in some revenue. So what we did here in this case is um, we used the business model canvas as a tool for figuring out what kind of business model we can build around this need which we have discovered previously. And the business model canvas is basically um, taking your business plan that you've been writing on 30 pages of paper and putting it on one sheet of paper, making it visual and um, being able to iterate quickly around this. So I will show you this um, how to use this business model canvas real quick. Um, and I, I do it in the same way as I, I do it with my clients. I tell them, um, well, just model your current business. Like, no digital stuff, just your core business. Just describe it. What kind of stuff do you sell to your customers? So here it was from a telco business. And then they say, OK, in the telco business, our value proposition, the stuff we sell to our customers is phone service and mobile data. Uh, what kind of business, what kind of customers do you have? Okay, we have private customers and we have business customers. How do you deliver your value proposition? Well, we have this really cool network infra infrastructure, telco infrastructure, which is very expensive. Um, and how do you keep your customers happy? Well, we keep them happy when the contract runs out, we give them subsidized phones. Okay, so that's how you get your customer relationship. And then how do you make money? Well, we have usage or flat fee. Um, what do you need? And this is all these things here on the left. What do you need inside your company in order to make, this, make the business work? Well, we have a CRM system. We have telco infrastructure. We have a billing infrastructure. And we have a couple of activities that we need to do. OK, these are the activities. Uh, and we have some key partners. For example, retail partners, you can go and buy your phone out there on, on the street, right, in the, in the shop or in the mall. And then there are certain costs attached to it. All these things on the left side uh, that you need to run your business, they cost something. Okay, so now you have modeled where you are today, uh, your business as it is today. And then you say, okay, um, now I'm going to change something. Now I'm going to make... Um, an API business out of this. And what I try to do is I try to um, leave as many things as I can in here and I change a couple of things. Okay, so how do I do this? I start again with my value proposition and say, okay, instead of phone service and mobile, I, I have a payment API. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the telco company also becomes uh, someone who provides a payment API. And then um, who do we sell this payment API to? Well, we sell this to online shops. Um, then how do, do we deliver this? Well, it's an API. We deliver it via HTTP. How do we keep our customers happy? Well, we have this really amazing API portal. And there you have documentation and tutorials and whatnot. OK, from our key resources, now this is inter interesting, we don't need the telco infrastructure anymore. But the key resources, these are the assets that we had previously in the, um, in the value chain, right? And some of these assets that we previously had, they stay there. 
We need the billing infrastructure in order to make the payment API. We need the CRM system. We need to know our customers. Okay. Key activities, we change. We do lots of software development now. Uh, retail partners, well, we maybe have some more software companies. Cost structure is going to change somehow. Um, and revenue streams, well, we can make it usage-based for our APIs. So you can see that we just shuffle around a couple of things. We take things out, replace them, and that's how we can play with the business model. And um, this is, of course, not the first iteration that, uh, that the customer did. This is, has evolved after, after several, several times of working and shifting around these post-it notes on the business model canvas. Okay, and then one more thing about business model canvas. Here's the value chain that you've seen before. And um, what you maybe see here is that there are basically two business models in there. There's the business model of the API provider, and there is a business model of the API consumer. And both of them could have such a business model canvas on their own, right? So now I take all these, these elements that I have in the value chain, and I place them already in the business model canvases down there. So let's start with the API provider. Um, value proposition of the API provider is going to be the API. OK. Then customer segment, yeah, it's going to be the API consumer, probably. Uh, key resources, we've seen. I just reuse what I already have in my, in my enterprise. Value proposition of the API consumer is going to be the app that he builds with the Lego bricks. I have customer segments. Um, that's going to be my end user. And key resource of the API consumer is going to be the API. And a key partner is going to be the API provider over there. So you can see how these two business models are linked. And I couldn't fill in everything here. But OK, there, there needs to be some, um, some additional work to be done individually. Challenge number three, build APIs that people want to use. So now you have identified a need, something that people want to have. You have um, I identified a business model around that need. And now number three is um, marketing whatever you've built, marketing that API. And that's going to be really quick, because I think there's a lot of other talks on this conference about it, and there are books written about it. Um, I just want to say, um, how can you make the APIs attractive? Well. You design them in a restful way. You have um, an API portal where you have tutorials, where you have some documentation that's ideally interactive. And um, that's how you make people want to use the API. Um, yeah. So I come to the summary. We have looked at these three challenges that the API provider has in order to make business with APIs. Challenge number one is identify APIs that developers need. For this, we use the tool um, design thinking. And I showed you some examples for that. Challenge number two, find a business model for APIs. You start with your current business model, and then you just iterate on that and change it around until it becomes a business model for APIs. And then challenge number three, build APIs that people want to use. Here, you um, do RESTful design, and you have your developer portal. Good. That's it. Thank you.